I've been wanting to give artificial intelligence and machine learning a try for a while. I stumbled on something called Brain.js, and it seems very approachable. What I'm going to do today is just a quick video. Um, I'm very new to this. I don't have a deep understanding of machine learning yet. And uh, I just kind of wanted to see, like, as a complete beginner, what I could accomplish. So let's go ahead and um, create a new project. I'm going to call it uh, Brain Experiments. Now we're going to create a new file called, um, let's do counts.js, because that's going to be, our first example is just going to be a simple um, counting number predictor. We're going to teach it to count down from 10. And let's initialize that node in this project. We're going to have to install brain.js from the node packet manager. So npm install brain.js. And it's important that it's brain.js because the previous version is, dot, is just brain. So I keep that in mind. What we're going to do is we're going to do initialize brain here. We're going to require brain.js. And um, we're going to give it some training data in the form of an array. And uh, it's just going to be us counting down from 10. Initialize our network. And this is recurrent. This is a recurrent neural network. And long short-term memory time step. And long short-term memory is a form. It's an architecture of a recurrent neural network, and it just allows us to allows the system to keep whole sequences in mind rather than just um, individual items. And then let's go ahead and train our network. And of course, you need to do this before you run your network on anything because this is what will allow you allow it to actually work. And so we're gonna, the first uh, parameter is gonna be the training data that we have up here. And then the second is gonna be an object with the, um, with any sort of parameters, uh, the configuration parameters for brain. Um, just to keep it simple though, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just do log for now. And then um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna log out the stats. Um, this is this I like doing this because it shows us the progress of our training because it can take a while. Now let's let's run this using Node. Under one percent training error, it stops. I think the default is like twenty thousand iterations, but since we have an error threshold of one percent um, or under one percent, I believe it stopped right there at five thousand seven hundred seventy. All right, so let's uh, console log. We're gonna um, we're going to run it, dot run, start counting from 9, 8, 7, and let's just try that and see what happens. All right, and so 5.99, so practically 6, estimating that 6 is going to be the next number. If we remove time step here, it'll just count down the rest of the array. There we go, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, next we're just going to do a, an application where we give it some quotes and then the beginning of the quote and see if it can match the rest and figure out what we're trying to say. Let's uh, go ahead, just copy all of this over. All right, and here is our, um, this is our array of philosophy quotes. The, the thing about using strings is it takes a lot longer to train. I mean, if you have thousands of strings, I mean, it might take a couple hours to train. So I think we're gonna introduce a new parameter here, a configuration parameter, and we're gonna do iterations because the default is about 20,000, but I don't want it to run that long since that's gonna take a while. So let's just set it at 2,000. All right, let's set it at 1,000. So you can see just for a few strings here, it's taking quite a bit more time. 
so now that we can train it and get to just one percent training error rate that's pretty good let's uh let's define a query string and then we will uh, log we'll run the query string and um, this is just going to get us the the string after our query string so we'll prepend whatever we want to search for so that it's a, the complete sentence so I, I like this one let's uh, let's see if the program can acknowledge its own existence here so let's just say I think and see what happens There we go. It figures out um, that it's actually <laughs> in existence. And just to show you that the number of iterations matters, let's just do 100 and see what we get. So it couldn't really make sense of what was going on here. You just get a bunch of gibberish. So this is all well and good. It's cool to run these in Node and see that we get, you know, we get some some results here on some basic little things, but. What I wanted to do is I actually wanted to build a, a real little web app where I could put this to use. And of course, I'm just a beginner. I'm just starting with this. So it's it's very experimental. I didn't have time to um, to really dive deep and do a huge data set and like something really, really accurate. But um, but what I what I made is a little spam email spam filter. All right. So here is my little app that I, I built to do some sort of email filtering. Um, and I have all the code. Um, I'll just let's kind of walk you guys through what I did here. And I just have um, an input, a submit button, and then a couple of lists here. One for emails, one for spam. I'm importing in um, jQuery, of course, and I'm importing in the brain.js CDN. As soon as the uh, web page is ready, we're going to um, set up our recurrent uh, neural network, long short-term memory. I have some email data here. Um, it's it's a lot bigger than what I've been working with, but uh, what I wanted to do is I just categorized some keywords for spam, like 50% off, and give it a couple just for like reinforcement, save up to 50% off, uh, limited time, save money, find a deal, apply now, and um, I'm saying that the value associated with spam is gonna be uh, zero. Um, then anything that I feel is important that I do not want to be classified as spam is going to be a one, such as password change, um, someone has replied to your post, uh, your order, resume, sign in. So those are all typically things that I, I really just use my email for. And then we have the training data, and what it's doing is it's mapping over this, um, this array and parsing out each object for um, an input, which is the subject. So for like sign, sign in, so it's telling us, okay, our subject is sign in, and the output that we're going to get from that, that we should get from that, is, um, is that it is a one or it's a valid email. And then running train on that with 2,000 iterations. Then every time we click the button, we're gonna take the input value, and we're gonna run the network on that input value and store it as a result. And uh, if the result equals zero, then we're gonna add the value to our spam list. And uh, otherwise, it's gonna be part of our email list. So you can see, as soon as I loaded this, it already went through all the iterations. There is a way to pre-train it and then have it loaded in the browser um, ready to go when a user lands on your, your site, I believe. So that was a little bit deeper than I wanted to dive in for this video, but I'm going to do that in a future video. Um, but of course, that's that's going to be really important in the real world. Since, since I have a pretty limited data set here, we're going to have to match these pretty precisely. Let's do, um, let's try uh, save up to. Okay, spam. Um, let's try 50% off. 
spam. Let's try save up to 50% off. Cool. And again, I mean, the more the more examples you feed it, the more accurate it would be, but also the longer it'll take to train. Let's um let's try so I have a few here, like say for a forum, Bill has replied to your post, Jim has replied to your post, Alex has replied to your post. So let's, um, since it's trained up in all three of these, let's try switching this name and see if it classifies that as a valid email. Let's go ahead and copy this. And let's, uh, let's change the name to, let's just say Joe. Cool, so um, that's pretty nice. It's able to deduce from these three that, okay, well, just the name has changed, but the rest is the same, so it's it's gotta be an email. Anyway, uh, there you go. It's, it's a very um, simple example of how to use this in a real web app. I definitely want to learn how to check the accuracy of this data set. I think the big one is find out a way to pre-train it and load it so that it doesn't have to load for the user or at least not as frequently. So uh, stay tuned for that in a future video. Give me a comment if uh, you guys have played around with this and, and what you think. Again, I'm, I'm a complete beginner, so I'm just learning this stuff. And I think it's really interesting. And I think what will happen in the future with this and how it'll be integrated in web apps will be really cool. So thanks for watching.